Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone. One second while I try to get the chat to pop in. I'll just take a moment. Oh, I need to transition over here to make that happen. One moment and we will get back to these guys. These folks, because I need to pull the, uh, the chat out. And then we'll be back. Just like that. Look at that. And then we can, whoa, ah! And then we can make the chat happen and then we can start talking. How you guys doing? But so far. Doing right all right. Doing all right. Cool, cool. Uh, well, I'm seeing the, the... I'm checking the audio. We seem to be getting audio, so that's good. Um, we are here to talk about a, an anime movie from the 80s. Uh, boy, is this an anime movie from the 80s. This is Urusai Yatsura 2, Beautiful Dreamer. Um, and I should start with a little you know, FYI. Urusai Yatsura is by Rumiko Takahashi. If you've seen Inuyasha or Ranma One Half or Rinne, um or uh, Amazing Koku. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, one of hers, hugely popular in the 70s uh, when it came out. Um, and very much a, her more recent stuff has been sort of more supernatural, uh, you know, supernatural action, drama, romance stuff. Um, this is just more of her early period which, where it's much more just wacky comedy. Um, there's sci-fi elements and so forth, but the TV series especially is just screwball comedy, a little bit of romance, a little bit of stuff all the way through. And then Mamoru Oshii got his little bits on it and made this movie. <laughs> Boy, did he. Because, boy, boy um, the reason we're doing this is because within the span of a couple of weeks, I, I stumbled across several different interviews with long-standing anime staff who said, I was an otaku until I watched this movie, and then I knew I wanted to be in the anime industry because anime was finally tackling, like, what it means to be human and the nature of reality, like some, some really deep stuff. And I was just so impressed with that. I was like, what the heck, you're Ursa Yatura? How could you be doing this? Because that is not your remit. Um, so we'll start off as usual. So what sort of exposure do you all have to Ursa Yatura before this point? John? Loma and her bikini. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty much it yep. I've seen um, I can't remember the, the I think it was two seasons ago there was some particular anime and mm -hmm. a girl shows up and she's got Lum's bikini on mm -hmm. and it was really very very obvious and I had no I didn't understand <laughs> why it was obvious until I sort of looked into it and I'm like oh I don't know who Lum is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I kind of look a little bit more, and you've just, you've talked about Urusai mm. Yatsura before, so that it's I've you know looked in to see the 195 episodes of the TV <laughs> animation and uh, <laughs> thought, wow, okay, now I know who Lum is, and now I know there's no way I have the time in my life to watch all of that. So <laughs> eh, that's about as much as I knew yeah. before, I, before watching uh, Beautiful Dreamer. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> uh, pretty much the same thing, uh, you know, more or less, uh, you know, on online. Did she so icon? Lum is so iconic; she's kind of a, everywhere. So I was aware of the existence, aware was aware that it was a thing, and um, which is really odd for me because I've pretty much delved into all the other related anime and manga, mm -hmm. and and which I really enjoy. But this, but for you know, Lum, I nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I never really watched it read any manga nothing this is actually the first thing that i watched of mm -hmm. it um and you know like john pretty much what i saw was that the con there would be a girl in a lump bikini and hair and then horns and then i'd be like lum <laughs> moving right along yeah because that's all i got mm -hmm. you know up until now and now i'd, I'd watch the series i and i'm not gonna invest the time to watch 195 episodes of lum but uh 
I, I'm going to watch some of it, but, but I did enjoy this movie. Very I'm, I'm sure it is a, a very tight narrative through all those 195 episodes. If you miss any single <laughs> one, you'll be completely lost. Yeah. I, I would well, and it's that's the same trope and that, over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. well, that's and that's the thing. It's like I complain about, and I legitimately, mm. is, at least in my opinion, and my opinion is always right. No, right. I'm just <laughs> – um, I legitimately have a problem where you have a 12-episode run of a series mm. – and episode six is a recap of the <laughs> five episodes right. that I've heard before. Right. Uh -huh. With the incredible number of episodes for Urasai Yatsura, I, I really would, I'm, I would really welcome there being, a, you know, it's a nice synopsis kind of oh. maybe a couple episodes to cover as, that. As far as I know, there is, like, like as far as I know, there's literally no plot. This is entirely episodic. But I mean, something that doesn't even just cover her arrival. It's just that's episode her arrival's one. one episode. Yeah. And that's, that's, as, no, as, as far as I, I know. Watching just episode one, yeah. you get the whole gist of it. Yeah. I, I, so, so basically, so, they, go ahead. so, so basically the recommendation is watch episode one and then for the other episodes, just kind of go <laughs> this way. Yeah. Adventure um, of the day. Yeah. I, I think like the, the first couple episodes, like, fully introduce all the characters, you know, so you get kind of some more of, of all of what's going on. Um, but yes, because I got the DVD of Volume 1 back in the day, I think Animago. Central Park Media, I think it was, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. That was, that was a while ago, back when they existed. Um, and, uh, <laughs> back, uh, back when that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Watch a few episodes of that, just get a, a sense of it. Um, and that was very much, you know, and, and that's, that was... So I watched Beautiful Dreamer first, just like like you all, um, some time ago, and then went back and watched the TV series. Like, oh, okay, I you know, and that's the thing is I, I think the one downside of watching this without having seen this the series is that um, there are some aspects of the characters' personalities that clearly you're expected to understand going into it. Um, beyond that, though, like there's nothing really here that delves into a huge amount of backstory. Except Blum's arrival on Earth, which is pretty clear in context. Um, so there's really not that much in the TV series. Like, oh, I wish I'd known. Um, well, do you? I'm, I'm assuming you get some, like the kid with the sword. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's he's rich kid. He's you know kind of stuck up kind of thing, and he's always trying to straighten out um, mm. uh, Ataru and get his you know act together, go in the right direction. But then there's the nurse. Yeah. Which Beautiful Dreamer doesn't really, mm -hmm. it doesn't give you any background onto why is Nurse Sakura, why is she, she seems to have like, she's dialed in on what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, without a background to it, it's like, okay, I get that uh, Moroboshi uh, Ataru is a pervert. Yeah. And, you know, he right. truly likes or loves Rhett Lum, but, mm -hmm. you know, he's also just, he he's likes all kinds of girls. That's mm -hmm. fine. But... <laughs> Nurse Sakura knows what's going on to the point where she's really very she's very observant of what's happening and it's like I just I why you know yeah. <laughs> like you never get that and this is like right. why yeah. why are you so special that you know all this stuff how do you set that you know the the spiritual trap up how how are you knowing these things you're just a school nurse right mm -hmm. like uh yeah. no. um and for, for the backstory for that is that she has a, her Uncle, grandfather, um, is a monk, Buddhist monk, um, right. who fills in the role of the spiritual character, you know, the, the, that, that guy. As you see a little um, bit of him in that. You mm -hmm. see him float yep. by it. Uh, and he's a pervert, so he's constantly stealing girls' panties and so forth. Um, oh. Which I think is one of the reasons why he's not in the film. <laughs> uh, okay. Like, let's just not go there. Um, and, uh, and so she's his, you know, daughter or granddaughter or what have you. And so she's a Miko. She has, like, okay. you know, yeah. So... Okay. Um, uh, I, as far as I recall in the series, that is there purely so they can have somebody show up during Supernatural episodes and go, aha, I know what's going on. You know, it, it's... Oh. <laughs> Convenient plot device. Yeah, pretty much. Here. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But, yeah. Um, but, but, but you're right. And so there, there are a few of those things around the relationships. Um uh, but I do think the movie does a, a, a pretty nice job. Um, when it first starts up, you get, I mean, you get all these weird shots of the beach um, and, and the characters sort of hang out on the beach 
and the the weirdness of all of that, um, which kind of sets you up. And the guy who's who's on send Mark. Yeah. And he wears a <laughs> helmet that has an on send symbol on it. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. Got um, an inside joke with the on send thing, or am I, I missing something? <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'll get that part. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, but then we get the, the whole sequence with the preparation for the school festival. Yeah. And I do like how that kind of sets up for you who the characters are in the middle of all this wackiness. Uh, where you have, you know, kind you of like the... Darth Vader, <laughs> Ultraman, <laughs> yeah, all those figures. I love all, all that. I love all that. And just listening in the background of going, well, look, many leaders, please come by and return the stolen leader. <laughs> well, yeah. With all the characters, it reminded me vaguely of Daikon 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's like you've got all these background yes. characters. You're like, wait yeah. a minute. They're standing in line with the nurse, and there's there's Darth Vader standing <laughs> in line. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Which would have come before this. So on I one of the you're... scaffoldings. And yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think they were they were having fun with that. Um but yeah, so you, you have all this all this wonderful craziness, um, and you do get a sense of, of of who they are. And I gotta say, I don't think I've ever seen a school sequence um, so perfectly capture so many background characters and the craziness yeah. of all that is going on. It just that sense that these are not just you know our protagonists in their spot. There's all this stuff happening around them, um, and plays in nicely to the whole. Um, theme of the fact that they've been prepping this so much that they're so sleep deprived they don't know it's real anymore they don't know what's happening anymore and everything is just kind of blending together um, yeah and it turns and out poor choices <laughs> yes. poor choices about very stuff very poor I don't choices. know like the third right cafe <laughs> oh. as soon as I saw that I'm like yep oh what <laughs> like oh no 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 don't do this <laughs> like this is terrible <laughs> i am watching that scene and i'm just like going jack boots death heads yeah skull cap the ton in what <laughs> wait a minute what well and that's why i knew that and, and then and then they just go on and like the one dude's just like all imperious and the one that jack boots in the cap and He's just like, you know, like wanting to punish people. I'm like, going, Yeah. Okay. Well, so they do all this, all this to the degree that they do. And the tank, oh, even, the tank. The, even the kid with the, with the sword says, it's a leopard. Yeah. It's a post-war oh, right. post yeah. Bundeswehr leopard tank. And mm -hmm. I'm like, if you're going, you just jump both feet into like <laughs> all kinds of foreboding stuff, stuff all over this. And yet you're like, yeah, we got a leopard tank. Be like, couldn't you have not gone with a third right cafe then? Could you go to a full war cafe or something? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I remember the, the excellent question of like, you just accept that this tank is there, but someone there does ask, how 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 did we get a forty ton tank in here? <laughs> yeah. Then you hear that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think it does a great job of establishing just kind of what this movie is. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, this is not a serious movie uh, for all the other no. strange things going on. No. Um, uh, but it is also kind of self-aware of how ridiculous it is. Uh, you, oh, know, yeah. you know, the characters are aware that, you know, wait, have, what? What's, what's going on here? Um, and, the, you know, again, you know, those, those sort of uh, uh, school moments, the, those times in school where you, you look around, you're like, yeah, what are we doing again? Like why? Are, why are we here? What's, what is life? You know. <laughs> um, I just I like when Ataru is in the tank. Yeah, and it's like he's having a vivid moment to himself. In yeah, the yeah, tank. Uh huh. And it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the you guys handled that very delicately and how you were addressing <laughs> that issue. Like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. You Atari still, you still said it, yeah. You still mm -hmm. said it, but he's clothed and he's by himself, and you know, mm -hmm. sort of the nod and a wink. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, which is very much or a sayatra. Like it is a, um, and it's it's worth n noting. Yeah, this is you know late seventies, early eighties. So anime is really moving out of that 
you know, aimed at kids um, era. Right. And so that means a lot of things are pushing the boundaries, you know, and okay, now we're doing things for teens. Let's just do a sex comedy, you know, and um, Earth's answer never goes like that, that far, but there's a lot of, you know, shower scenes and oh, I, you know, fell into your underwear drawer and all that kind of stuff. Where it's like, oh, okay, you know, um, we get it, anime. Um, <laughs> teenagers are horny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, the, the principal and the giant cat. Yeah. Um, this is a very serious movie. Um, well, how, how did you like when the, when, uh, Sakura is giving out, like, uh, onsen mic, some tranquilizers. Yeah. She gives him, <laughs> like, a gallon <laughs> jug of tranquilizer. I'm like, <laughs> that's like horse tranquilizers. What are you doing to this guy? And, and just, like, and then later on when they go to his apartment and when you start learning things, and then mm -hmm. you first walk into the apartment and you see, you see her face and she's like, Oh God! As she busts <laughs> over the door, and, and my thought was like, oh "God, he really did get the yeah the tranquilizer. He got the like, laxatives. The, the, the laxatives. <laughs> yeah. Am I about to see a horror show? Yeah, exactly. Like, and, you know, but it was a different kind of horror show. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yes. It was, it was dust. It disgusting. was just dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dust and mold. Yep. But that was clearly what they were setting up, right? Like this yeah. was, you know, that's where they were oh, yeah. going. Um, and I, I did just love the comedy of, of this, you know, th this character that we, we've seen as this very calm, collected doctor. You do this and then suddenly, oops, you know, and then <laughs> motorcycle driving through town, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and not just through town, but up the stairs. Yes, she was... Yeah. She was busy. Um, um, but yeah, um, trying to get that shot. There we go. Um, and then we start Doing realizing. An ultra man. There we are. Um, and this is where we start realizing. The, this is where we start getting our Mamoru Oshii bits. Um, was this before? or yeah, so This was after the, the first sequence where... Um, they uh, were uh, uh, Taru is driving through the night to get food, yeah. um, and with in a Kubel wagon with a German soldier driver. Right. <laughs> of course, and and that scene right there, mm -hmm. it made me think of the painting um, where you've got Bogart at the, oh, yeah. at the coffee bar. Yeah. I don't remember. There you go. Dreams. That's exactly what that what they pulled up there. I like. I was yeah. ex fully expecting to see the James Dean Humphrey Bogart. I think it was like those yeah are Monroe. Like I think yeah. 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 And it's like I full. I'm like oh. <laughs> I'm like here it comes. We're gonna do this. Is an homage thing? I'm like I don't know. Yeah. No. It suddenly turns so, into Angel's so, Day. Yeah. So, oh gosh. Yeah. And so then that you know like they start getting creeped out and like just like and the way that they do that scene everything else is like really chaotic and. Just to and fro, to and fro action. Mm -hmm. Oops, going to you know, get laxatives out instead of horse tranquilizers because either one is a good choice. Yeah. But going to, but going, then they hit this scene and it's like they're just driving. They're not really talking. Mm -hmm. and everything calms down for yes. a moment and everything is yeah. narrowed, narrowed. And you're just like, okay, I'm about to see something important. Mm -hmm. Then you see the reaction of uh, Mondo. I, this is a, not Mondo. Just watch Mandalorian. Um, so, <laughs> um, I'm not going to not names. Baby Yoda, Steve. <laughs> the is Baby Yoda. Now, um, uh, the you know the the two students, the, the guy with the sword who reminds me of Kuno in Ranma one half. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ataru, are they just kind of stop and they're speechless and they don't really say anything. They're just like the wide eyed and they're just like mm -hmm. you know, following that that little band. With faceless band, and that's when you get the the Oshi moment there, and you're just like, "Up oh, there he is," and and you're like wanting to understand what this is because clearly it means something, and they're freaked out by it. Oh yeah. And I was wondering, as I mentioned to you guys in the chat and in you know the messaging a little bit earlier, I was wondering at that point if I had actually accidentally put in Nyquil into my whiskey <laughs> and don't recall actually pouring the whiskey. This is, mm -hmm. is this a dream? Where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> and you know, at this point, 
it was just a really weird kind of cool moment mm -hmm. and um but where, where just things kind of the focus just goes from like this weird stuff and then just there you go pay attention and it's a good example of where i think she was very smart here to um to include that with the reactions of these wacky characters that we're used to yeah. you know it kind of contextualizes it of yeah. saying you know I'm not just going to be artsy out of nowhere, just kind of drop it into this goofy movie. That is part of this goofy movie, and the goofy characters realize how weird this is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also because interesting, that whole, that whole thing when they're going down there, mm -hmm. is you become acutely aware when they leave the school, it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, at any given point in nighttime, you've got some cars and some people and mm -hmm. shops and stuff are open. And as they're proceeding down to go get food, you become acutely aware of the fact that there's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's not really lights. There's not mm -hmm. really anything going on except for the florist shop. Yep. And then this weird, you know, <laughs> mystical street parade occurs that it's just like, oh, yep. okay. It's like, is this the foreboding of doom? I mean, what's going to happen now? Yeah. And I think it's certainly reminiscent of the Night Parade of 100 Demons. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's kind of those things getting implied to the characters. Um, and then you know, Sakura starts asking and figuring out what's going on here. Um, how, how Just how strange everything is. Um, and it is interesting how they kind of do this. Um, I think it's hard in a movie like this where you're juggling comedy with a fairly heavy concept to communicate that in a way that doesn't sound like you're going, aren't you impressed at how deep I am? You know? Um, Pretension. Exactly. And I, I think this is fun because the characters are realizing it for themselves without them trying to like be for the audience the realization of what's going on. Like You could have already been included on this but like their realizations and their conversations and so forth are operating on their own level, um, which I think kind of works work, works nicely. Um, uh, partly because it's just such a weird idea, uh, caught in a time loop. Yeah, the Eternal Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, <laughs> which is pretty freaking scary. Um, and again, again, I and I appreciate that you know the, the part of the movie is then. What do they do? Immediately they're like, okay, let's stop this. Let's break the loop. You know, they all have to go home. They can't stay here tonight. And so we'll, we'll try to stop it that way. Which doesn't work. <laughs> and you get that wonderful, again, sort of comedic horror of them all splitting off and going in, the, in all their own directions and then all eventually ending up back in the same spot. Back to school. <laughs> and they're all like, what? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would be thoroughly confused if I had ever gotten on to the Red Line Metro and then at Metro Center <laughs> on my way back to Shady Grove and way back at Metro Center because there is no loop. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. <laughs> there is no loop on that train. And and I'd be like, I'd be thoroughly confused and I, I probably would go, I, I'm going to stay on the train. <laughs> yeah. What's going a on? A new fresh hell awaits me. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, remember. Um, and then they start planting all of this fun little stuff for later. Um, you know, and going back and, and watching it now, I realize how every so often they cut back to Lum. And they cut back to, you know, her interacting with people and how happy she is. And yeah. she's a happy-go-lucky character, right? Like she's, I mean, she, she lost a foot race to a human and so decided to live with him forever <clears throat> because he's her darling. Like, she's, she's not the brightest bulb in the drawer. But, um, you know, they are, again, sort of planting this idea that, oh, no, she's happy with all this. She's fine with all this. Huh. Um, and why is Ten the Flying Baby a flying baby? Because he's Ten the Flying Baby. Okay. Okay. He's he's a character from the original, and he's just one of the, her family, and he's just a flying baby. 
but it's not her and Ataru's kid. No, no, no. no. Okay, good. Okay. Thank I was, God. I was, I was hoping. I, I was hoping I didn't miss. Uh, it. I'd be like, uh, uh, no, uh, no. He, he's 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 one of the grand one of the many grand nephews of Tenchi. Oh, hey. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then you get this wonderful sequence where, and I think this is one of Oshii's master strokes, where the characters are all walking back to school, and you get this very technically difficult shot of them walking and seeing them in their reflections in the water. Yeah. Um, Because yeah. that's not easy to layer everything over and make it feel like you're looking at reflections in the water and not just weird overlays of things. Um, yeah. Because it does get across this idea of, oh, we're not in reality anymore. You know, we're in some reflection of what's yeah. going on. And you didn't cover this in one of your panels, Brent. Because the puddle scene mm. and the, the wind chimes through the alleyways, mm -hmm. I've seen yeah. that in mm -hmm. a panel. And for the love of me, I oh, can't figure out where, which panel I saw. Yeah, in. No, I, I have not, because I have not pulling, uh, pulled stuff from this movie. Dang. Yeah. Somebody somebody covered that and they went through exactly that. They're like, look at how this was rendered. Yeah. Look at the rest of the film. Yeah. And you can tell that there's something specifically for you to look at mm -hmm. in what's going on in this scene. It should mm -hmm. draw your eye for you to try and figure out what am I looking at? Am I looking at the reflection? Am I looking at the at the reality? Well, you know, how do I determine what's going on here? Mm -hmm. It's like, ah. Yep. Absolutely. Um no, and then I talk and then that taro sinks. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. sure. And it gets weird. Um, <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, yes, boy. it does. Um, uh, whereupon, yeah, the, the, the tank shows back up. And and this is the point, yeah. I think, where, um, again, I think uh, Oshi was, was smart in saying, okay, we're being weird for a while. We're, we're sort of setting the tone here. What's the next step? There's a tank in the pool. Uh, you know, everybody's <laughs> freaking out. Ataru shows up in there. And so, um, I forget his name, white suit guy. Um, Is it you know, Mendow? Mendo, yeah, Mendo. Yeah, yeah. Be mm -hmm. Because yeah. the noodle shop is the Mendow family. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Secret base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's it. I, um, I, I just I just love that scene where where Lum just kind of goes, like I'm gonna give you the count to three, and all the students are that are around just go, oh, yeah. <laughs> run! <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we know it's coming, um, yeah. and of course, as an audience, we now have an idea what's coming too, um, because lightning and water do not mix very well. No, no. Um, and, uh, Nobody died, oh, no. so that was the plot. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all fine. Um, and then uh, we get our wonderful sort of horror movie sequence where they all go back to their high school and they're all wandering around trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and it turns sort of M.C. Escher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that scene. That whole entire scene, I love that. The endless hallway Spares. of like... Mm -hmm. Wow. And again, stairs and like, think of how hard that is to animate. Yeah. <sighs> totally. It is commitment to the, to the, to the shtick. <laughs> yeah. Mandel running. I'm scared of the dark. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye, darling, darling. You know, so it's just like trapped in like the, the forever mirror. Yeah. And then everyone else is just like going, oh my God, windows now. I'm just like going, Wait a minute, my head hurts. <laughs> um, and it's an odd kind of a, a red herring, because I think all up to this point in the in the, the movie, they've been pointing out that they're all kind of centers on Tobiki High, um, and so you figure, oh, okay, so obviously it's it's become haunted or something, right? There's it's Ghostbusters, right? Like we need to to you know uh, resolve that. Um, uh, and so you, um, um, you know, that doesn't work, obviously. Um, <laughs> and so, so, so Mendo goes, let's go to my noodle shop because I have a Harrier jet there. 
I love that. <laughs> I love the fact too that it's like a Harrier jet has a very you know it's a jet, so mm -hmm. it makes a jet, jet. noise, <laughs> and yet they purposely used a sound that sounded like literally like a spacecraft. Interesting. When it's yeah. When it's lifting yeah. off, it does not sound like mm -hmm. it should sound. Mm -hmm. Which afterwards, it's like, uh... oh, I get. I get that. Yeah. I see you made it sound weird because it's supposed to sound weird. Right. It's not Could actually Harrier weird. Jet. Yeah. That's a great yeah. point. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get But the I just love Mandow's rea reaction to when they're like, oh, we're going to your new. Why? We're not hungry. He goes, no, no, no. It's, it's full. It's where I keep my Harrier Jet. <laughs> right, exactly. You know. <laughs> Idiot, you fool. Don't you know that people like me yeah. have 40 ton leopard tanks that we can <laughs> magically put on the second story of a building? Mm -hmm. and, and I carry the samurai sword around, and no one seems to want it to take away from me at <laughs> nope. school. Mm -hmm. I can fly. And the fact that you can fly. Yeah. Right here, right? <laughs> With that and having thing? people. Having that people just sort of on. clustered all over it. <laughs> Given the fact that a Harrier jet has an enormous intake fan <laughs> right behind the cockpit, that would have sucked half the people in. Like, yeah! Because, hey, Chibi, Chibi should have been just... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> character too. Gone. Absolutely. But again, I think all of that, the weirdness of the sound, mm -hmm. just the ludicrous element of it, like, mm -hmm. it's just... It's it's stock hilarity, you know. What I mean, it's yeah, like mm -hmm. this is just kind of a goofy, kind of funny thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in retrospect, again, you look back at it, and it's like they're not reacting to this as bizarrely as it entirely is. Mm -hmm. It's dream, you know. Logic. It's like yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like well, I had to mm -hmm. dial that back to figure out why granted, that's just granted. Stuff like this does happen in a TV show, like you know. There is queer, uh, b bizarre, you know, it's like, oh, yes, my Harrier jet. Um, but but I don't not think people that clustered stuff. on the outside of it like Probably. that. Probably. But still, I, I agree with you that I think this is kind of amping it up, right? It is sort right. of pushing it to a, to, a, to an extent. Um, and then you get the reveal, the, the what I like to call the Discworld reveal. Um, yes. The <laughs> great, great Atuin. Exactly. <laughs> Love it. Um, that, uh, that, that, I got... Uh, mm, what I was going to say is that I got the uh, Dark City feel. Mm, mm -hmm. The You know, Discworld, you're right, though, on, on that. But the Dark City for uh, science fiction, and I was just like, oh, great. But then they went underneath, and, you know, there's Onsen Guy and you know, the, the monk. And mm -hmm. I'm just like... Yeah, I was waiting for elephants. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> on top on top of that, on top, right, yeah, on top of the turtle. And then I'm like going, turtle, turtle. Well, that was from it. No, that's not right. <laughs> no. Well, that's another throwback because once they mm. see this, it mm. I, it occurred to me that Sakura was riding in a taxi mm -hmm. that was Blue Turtle Taxi. Oh, oh nicely like, done. That. Wait a minute, yeah. and I'm like Blue Turtle Taxi, and she's trying to get she's trying to get to the Dragon Palace. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Oh, yeah. this is Princess Odahime kind of thing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I'm like, wait mm -hmm. a minute. Nicely mm -hmm. found. I had not noticed that. Um, and so, and again, this is this is where I I I, I kind of really fell in love with this movie. Is <laughs> uh, I think in a lot of I think in a Hollywood movie, this would have turned into like the action sequence at this point. You know, how are we going to uh, fix this? How are we going to resolve this? And uh, this turns into like an isekai series, kind of. Um, it's like, okay, we're here now. Yeah. And we're just going to exist. Um, <laughs> well, the good questions that get asked with no answer. How come the water's still on? Right. How come there's still heat? Well, How come heat. this this convenience store keeps having food? Mm-hmm. And nobody answers the question. <laughs> like, oh, cool. Yep. Um, she's still back by mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That poor lady was put under a lot of weight there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and, and again, the movie takes a turn where it suddenly becomes about um, uh, Magane. 
uh, talking about, you know, he, he sort of turns into a, almost an Apocalypse Now you know, movie where it's all, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, something is different, and my gosh. Um, uh, and, and again, I think when you hit this this point in the movie, it it feels a little like a, of, a, of an odd shift, but I think you need somebody to explain to you what's going on. Ataru is not going to be the one. Lum's not going to be the one. Uh, you know, it has to be some side character who's like, "Yeah, this is effing weird." Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. And Mendel really, really, he steps into that from being a sort of you know haughty jerk mm -hmm. to actually he and Sakura working yeah fairly behind the scenes. Blowing up buildings for him, I, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> working out, you know, mm. all the details and fleshing out the the underpinnings of this bizarre turtle world in which they yeah. now live. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, um, did you guys notice the shot of uh, him in the tank going up over the hill while another uh, uh, jeep goes under it, just like an angel's egg? Yeah, like the, the, I was going to say, because it had the specifically the current yeah, like, Oh, that's where you pulled that from. Good to know. Um, of course, Angel's Egg is a is, is just a, a remake of Ursa Yatsura. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is, and yeah. who's Lum in Angel's Egg? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not the little creepy girl. Oh. Um... <laughs> Um, and then you get this very, again, sort of classically sort of Rumoka Takahashi sequence of them all in bathing suits, you know, hanging out, having fun, you know, eating ramen, um, just kind of enjoying this their lives. post-apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Um, but that is kind of the point. Um, and I'm watching Godzilla, I forgot that too. Um, yeah. literally Godzilla movie. Um, um... And I think it's interesting, too, because this is also a point socially where the otaku phenomenon exists. Um, you know, hikikomori and things like that has started to exist. Um, and so I think there's also a bit of a commentary here on the idea of eternal adolescence. Um, that you're just, you know, living out your days without a care in the world and just kind of relaxing um, and not really thinking about it, not really thinking about what's, what's going on in your lives. Um, that one screenshot, Brent. Oh, yeah. The, the His idiot friend oh. who's sitting there with his boxer shorts. You, you noticed that, too, huh? Man. Yep. Oh, Stands yeah. Down the, I the saw shorts. that. I was yep. like, excuse me? <laughs> so, so I naturally, whenever I see scenes like that, I naturally go, you know, counterclockwise for some reason. Mm. See what's and going I came around, around them. <laughs> Yeah, going around. Okay, yeah, they're still. Yeah, okay, guys, holding like, all right, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. I just, oh, <laughs> we don't need that. Mm -hmm. Don't we have yeah, a taru that's... already? Don't we have a taru already? Come on, yeah, come on, I mean, come on yeah. man, go out the yard. <laughs> yeah. Go out with the hair you the laundry hanging off. Yeah, yeah. A whole, a whole for respect world, for others. Boy. Come on, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nobody wants that. In fairness, I, I thought I it was just, interesting. Like, they never addressed how long they were there. I true. That was, that was yeah. interesting that yeah. all of the wreckage you, you see mm -hmm. of the city, like sections of it that are like wholly raised to the foundations, mm -hmm. there's no indication. It. That, I mean, that kind of thing, unless it was Mendow blowing everything up, everything, mm -hmm. that means that the decay of the surrounding area has been ongoing. Well, and that's the and other that's thing. Like, Hundreds of years of decay. Yeah, like, no, and, and uh, like, you know when you see him blowing up things, like he's blowing up things. He doesn't have a decay ray. Yeah, you know the, the, the implication is yeah that they have been living this eternal summer for like literally centuries. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is disturbing. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and again, it's one of the, the the neat things about the movie is that like nobody says that, um, and they none of them would have recognized that. Right, that's the whole point, is that this is just kind of letting them live in this world, and it just never occurs to them because dream logic. But as an audience, you're seeing that going, oh, mm. yeah. Because one of the, one of the things that confused me about that about the time passing was mm. that first of all the the, the I forget I don't know the character's name, but Mister, you know, he had, he had the the jack boots and 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 hat. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, he grew a ponytail. But none of the others right. grew 
for any hair or anything mm, like that. Yeah. And Ataru's father is reading a newspaper. They say, well, you know, he keeps getting the newspaper. How is he keep getting the newspaper? <laughs> I'm like going, are you reading the same thing over and over again? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there are books that I like, like Dune, I've read like, you know, up to a billion times. But there'll be times so I'll be just like, not today. Let me choose Altered Carbon today. Mm-hmm. You know, there's yeah. changed it up. So is there like any news that he's reading? And if so, is it just kind of like... Because I can't imagine it be the same newspaper every day. Yep, still rubble. Yep, still yeah. same old thing. You're still a jerk. <laughs> and who's happy with that? Yes, mm-hmm. I don't know. Or, or is it like, hey, it's Japan, twenty one twenty eight, and this is what's going on. Just to let yeah. you know while you're up in dreamland. Mm-hmm. A thousand years have passed, and they finally invented smell vision Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. King Crosby's horse finally's come in. I'm oh, sorry, this is from old, old Warner Brothers cartoon. Sorry, wrong, wrong medium. Wrong, no, right medium, wrong show. There we go. Um, <laughs> I just want to take a, a moment to uh, look at chat here real quick. Um, yeah. Jay in the chat is noting that, uh, or he made great stories, see its importance in a lot of anime. You're absolutely right. Um, or he may just come up over and over and over again. And it's hard because it is, again, kind of like Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella to us, where right. even when it's not like the plot, it's often subtext. It's often kind of being pulled in. Um, Jay also says, I love anime in many ways because you can actually see little Easter eggs of other medias and animes if you look closely. Totally. Um, yeah. Oh, this, this, this one's totally chock full of it. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, yeah, so they... they um, um, then we start accelerating into, you know, the, the third act, basically where Sakura and, and, and Mendo start like really investigating, figuring out what's actually going on, and confront the... Their, yes, Yes. Um, their actual Which enemy. you realize the blue turtle taxi driver mm-hmm. was yep. a Mujok. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. was thinking back on that, I was just like, the voice is this... Who is... I heard that voice. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's the taxi driver. I'm like, yep. oh crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... And I do also in, enjoy again. You, know, you have all of this seriousness, all of this build up, and then you know the actually very Cagliostro uh, reveal of you know, he's been behind all of these tragedies of history and all of these terrible things and all this. And how do you know that? Yeah. It's in this book. You know, yeah. you know <laughs> a thousand and one supernatural <laughs> facts. You know, it's like, <laughs> and right. responsible for everything from Adam and Eve to Hitler. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what? <laughs> Like this is insane. <laughs> Good job. You've made me believe this movie's nuts. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, 100%. Uh, and, again, and it's one of the weird things, and it's it's it's, it's why I have difficulty in folks who are like, oh, I love Rumika Takashi. What else has she done? Like, you know, I've seen Inuyasha. What else has he done? I'm like, here's the thing. Like, she's changed. You know, this is yeah. not Inuyasha. It is very, yeah. very yeah. ridiculous. Um, um, even down to like just kind of the personality yeah. identity in general, you know, who this character is, um, is interesting because in so many things where you have this sort of dream within a dream, who is, who is your enemy, they go with a very goofy character. Um, you know, he's just oh, this yeah. bizarre circus master, ringmaster type. Um, and you, like, he's never treated seriously. Um, really throughout the entire thing. Uh, even though, like, he's the one. Like, he, he is the one responsible for all this. He has all this cosmic power. And, you know, he, even he recognizes that he's basically, in the end, everyone's dream turns into a nightmare. Mm-hmm. You know, like when he's talking about Hitler, he yeah. was just like, you get, the, you get the inferred reference that, you know, he just wanted to be an artist, and that's what he was trying to do. Oops, six million lives later, mm-hmm. you know, it's yeah. just... Um, yeah. You know, it's just, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you're, you're goofy. You're goofy, but you, uh, you really messed up. Yeah. And he seems to understand that to a degree, and that's when he, you know, comes across Lum, and he goes, oh, "Pure of heart. You know what? This will be the last dream, and I'm not gonna mess this one up because I'm gonna be the caretaker of this dream." And you know, that's when you just discover the true horror because this is the guy who created Hitler. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and Mujak is not an objectionable kind of character. I mean, he no, doesn't. No. You don't see him in a in a you know sort of misty, darkened kind of. Oh, I manipulate dreams. No, he's a, just kind of a goofy little pudgy dude. And he seems like fairly likable. Well, and like yeah. he, he he makes the point that uh, you know he's not responsible for what happens in the dreams. He's just there to make them happen, and it is where those people take those dreams where the bad stuff happens. Yeah. You know? Um, he's, he's kind of the, the warden, but he is in no way, uh, you know, um, planning all this out. Um, which, again, is where the movie kind of gets interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's where it kind of gets deep, where you're like, oh, dang, I have responsibility for my actions? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and even, even there, you know, again, you have this thing where um, um, ultimately, you know, Lum's lovely little dream, her fantasy, has locked these people away for centuries. Yeah, when she goes back, uh, way back at the beginning of the movie, when she sits there, where, where the one girl says, you know, why do you have that stupid grin on your face, essentially? Yeah. And Lovin turns around and goes, well, I just want to be with, you know, Darling and his friends and this, mm-hmm. that. Forever. And everything. And then as uh, forever, and then as the movie goes on, and you're just like going, oh, oh, mm-hmm. boy. Okay. <laughs> yep. She got her wish. <laughs> yep, exactly. Precisely. That, she that, got a wish. That is, that is kind of the tragedy. Is It's like, oh, dear. Um, well, it's also interesting that people who... who You don't see them necessarily cross mm-hmm. Lum, mm-hmm. but like that scene where they're making tea mm-hmm. and the other... The, I don't remember that girl's name. Yeah. yeah. The character girl. Mm-hmm. Um, Super strong one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. She talks about, oh, you know, sometimes you need to be there to be aware for somebody else Mm -hmm. to make sure that they're okay, that's someone you care for, and it's like, okay, I don't know who she's Mm -hmm. trying to relate to. Is it Ataru, or is it it somebody else? But she apparently crosses Lum enough that in that wind chime sequence, Mm -hmm. she gets her own time to go away. And people, like, start to, you know, not be around by the end of the show. Onsen mm-hmm. Mark is missing. Yep. She's missing. And it's just like, so are these people that cross Lum or that mm-hmm. just don't fit neatly into her concept of a happy experience? Mm-hmm. So she just inadvertently exits them? Yep. I'm like, ooh. I think it's yeah. just the, in, I think between that and um, the, the dream guy, um, mm-hmm. I think what is happening is that the dream guy sees what's happening with the particular character that might interfere with the dream. Mm-hmm. That's why Sakura says at that point, right before they do the confrontation, he goes, clearly Mandao and I are going to be next because yeah. they're figuring it out. Right. Mm-hmm. And they know that, that whatever the power is behind all of this is going to go, yeah, you're disturbing this person's dream, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to away so we're going to take you put you on top of the turtle and have you hold up for eternity right the wasted wasteland of of the uh, anime disc world mm. so here you go yep this is just like wow <laughs> <laughs> mess, mess with lum's dream and out mm. the door you go um whereupon you get this odd i'm gonna call it odd um harem scene well just yeah flashbacks. it's not just the, the harem <laughs> scene because I, I don't want to show the nudity um but it's <laughs> um uh but it's, it's just sort of this weird redemption arc for ataru where you get to see just like how strongly he feels about lum and how like he's gonna keep on keep on doing this you know for as long as it takes which leads to this like legitimately tragic sequence um uh, well, first off, you get the, the the remake of the first episode sequence where he's racing against Lum and yeah. they fall and so forth and so on. Um, which is, again, great Easter egg for those who've seen the show before. Um, the Frankenstein thing. But then this whole science fiction thing where like he wakes up in this pod and he realizes that, you know, Lum was sent with him and she didn't make it. And like... 
I'll be honest, I, I felt something there. Like, it, it suddenly, like, man, this feels real in an odd way. Um, and in a way that is very interesting for Lum's dream. Right? Well, I was, I was kind of wondering, like, I f- was, didn't they use this in Alien? Or Aliens? Mm-hmm. Aliens they, and, and, and they cryo freeze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they cryo freeze uh, Ridley, mm-hmm. and and the girl, the little girl, her mm-hmm. cryo freeze chamber goes wrong and she drowns. Mm-hmm. So that kind of exits the little girl from the yeah. from the thing. It's like mm-hmm. so. I saw this and I'm like, oh no, yeah. no, 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 no. There's there's that and there's uh, Planet of the Apes where they're coming back to Earth mm-hmm. and they and the the woman the the one woman among the, the three guys in the spaceship, she's all churbled up and in, inside the little pyrogenic thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But that was, but yeah, I was kind of interested in that. I'm like, you're with Brian, because I'm just like, wait a minute, isn't this Lump's dream? Yeah. And, and granted, like, it's, it's, it's technically Ataru's dream, because he's kind of trying to give Ataru his ideal life. But it's Ataru's dream about Lum. Yeah. And so to make it, you know, his dream of how Lum would be. In a sense, it's his subconscious telling him, like, you actually do care about this girl. Like, you say you care about the girl, and you, because you're making this big bravado thing. But, like, this is how much this really would impact you if something happened to her. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, and again, you, know, you don't see her, but you know, her skin's effing pale in that sequence. Like, it's clear she no, no it's not going to happen. Um... Um, which then builds into the, the, the famous DNA sequence. Um, yeah. Uh, which has been sort of um, reviewed and reused and, and, and referenced in various spots where the movie just finally goes, okay, let's, let's, let's sit down and really talk about this. Um, and you get the creepy yeah. little girl. Yes. The DNA yes. Yes. Uh-huh. There she By goes. The way. Like, uh-huh. Like, to, yeah. to, to the night, me, the got, night parade girl. There she goes again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh. so, so to me, when we hit this sequence, I was just like going, "Okay, this is the point where they said, where the you know the the storyboard staff or whatever at the animation studio just said, oh, we gotta stop this somehow. We just <laughs> keep on going, and we need to really figure out an end. What do we do?" Um, DNA strand, creepy girl, creepy little girl, and just have them just going all around them and 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 doing whatnot, because it's totally not really con- for me. It was like the, the one scene that just separates itself from everything else. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it, it's just the one scene where you're supposed to. It's it, when you think about it, actually that that scene is actually very minimal. Yes. So it actually, it just, just like the scene with, when at the beginning of the movie when they see the little band walk across, mm-hmm. you're supposed to, to settle down and, and just concentrate on what's what you're being told. And this is, you know, kind of like, it's kind of like, okay, fun time's over. You got to pay attention now. <laughs> yeah. And it will then, be a test at the end of the chapter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to figure out who the creepy girl is in the back. Mm-hmm. You know, that, you're, that absolutely right. you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And something that Oshii does, I mean, you know, a lot is this, this this slowing down the movie, you know, really making you pay attention. Um, and I also love this sequence because it is again kind of animators talking direct. It's, it's animators communicating things through animation because this is something that, um, uh, and I'm fast forwarding here so you can see it. But when you're watching it, you're like, oh, okay, that is a repeated loop in the background, right? And they're just, okay, they, they animated this thing and they're just looping it over and over and over. And it keeps changing. And it keeps moving. And it keeps shifting. You're like, oh, gods, they're spending minutes animating. Like, that is an insane yeah. amount of work. Yeah. Um, just for something happening in the background for, you know, visuals. It's like, oh, oh, kill me. Because um, <laughs> they're saying, like, and again, it, it, it's, 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 you know, we're not... We're not pausing and having this long dialogue scene to be cheap. You know, we're not slowing it down to be cheap. Like, we are telling you something. And uh, because this is really the one moment in the movie that's not a dream. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not reality. 
but you know, it is not a dreamscape that he's, he's invented. Um, this is where he actually kind of confronts what's going on um, and is able to kind of uh, uh, go through it. Um, whereupon he wakes up. And it's all over. It was only a dream. Right? It was a dream. They're all back in their uh, in their club room. room. Yep. They're all They've all spent out. the night. Mm-hmm. The tank is still there. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the tank is there. there. Um, and then, you know, little guy says goodbye and walks Mujang away. Goes on uh, and he's right there. Whereupon, and this is where, oh, uh, man, I love this movie. Um, you get the title card. For the movie. Like, the actual title of the movie does not come in until one hour and 26 minutes into the movie. And it's literally hanging off their school. Oh, lost, uh, lost Steve there for a second. Oops. Steve went out. Oh, no. Um, he can't handle it. Um, the dream ended. Exactly. He woke up. <laughs> exactly. And it's just so meta. Yeah. Well, it's also one of those things where you get to the end of the film and it's like, um, is it the end? Because mm-hmm. Mujok's the master of dreams. It, right. He could have seen that the dream wasn't going right. Mm-hmm. So he pulled the plug. Yep. And when uh, Ataru comes back and it's like, oh, no, we're back in the classroom. Everything's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. It's like, but Mujok's still there. Yep. So if mm-hmm. Mujok's still there that means this could still be a continuation of the dream. So it's just like, oh, uh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, the end, the end scene, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I loved the, and I thought it was very interesting, there's a, a, a line of dialogue where, I think it is in, in, in this ending sequence, where somebody kind of rolls his eyes and goes, we're just going to keep on doing this forever. And yeah. <laughs> not only is that sort of a, a, a you know, a line speaking to the entire movie. It's a line speaking to like the nature of sitcoms themselves, right? Like that is literally what they are fated to do is to just be corny, goofy high schoolers for the rest of time. Um, Cause that's what they were literally written to do. Um, and it does, again, it's one of those smart things where I think it, it, at the end it does make you think of, Oh God. Yeah. I like this is the whole point of this is entertainment to make me watch them just repeat the same actions for eternity. Same slip and fall gags, the same oops, pansu yeah. shots. Yep. Whole mm-hmm. skirt flip mistake every time. Walk into the room and see somebody undressing, get slapped in the face. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. The eternity, the eternity of that loop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang, she, you actually like made a whole statement about the nature of anime and like the nature of these <laughs> sorts of shows right there. And when it was pulling back, I, I, I'm, I'm curious about, about you guys. When I saw that, I was like, is this going to be a model? Like, is it going to reveal that this school is, like, inside a globe or something? Right? <laughs> like, I was waiting for that. Rosebud. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, you know. no. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Well, and you notice, oh, like, yeah. if they pull what out... Beautiful Dreamers was yeah. Citizen Kane. Anime. There we are. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you pull out, and they, they, the, um, the, the walls in front of the, the school are blank. Like, there's no posters, there's no sign for the school, there's nobody walking out there. It's just empty. And, again, I don't know, but it's one of those, huh, that, that's an oddly, uh, an oddly interesting sort of um, environment to, to end the movie on. I don't know. Perhaps it represents the budget running out. <laughs> oh, true. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let's is... put some posters in the side. No, we've got no more money. We did the whole DNA thing. We got no more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, likely. Um, I'm about to laugh. I'm yeah, to... the movie comes out tomorrow. Yeah, just <laughs> so we're going to animate this final scene as we're drawing back. No, literally, hold that cell and walk backwards. <laughs> Keep filming it. Let's go. Let's go. We got no time for this. Keep moving. Speaking of which, Mamoru Shi, I saw him in an interview about Ghost in the Shell, where he said, "By the way, if you ever wondered why there are no like um, special features around like 
cuts that didn't make it into the movie. It's because we had neither the time nor the budget for extra shots. Like, that was all we could do. Like, everything we did made it into the movie. Like, there was not going to be, like, tons of extra material. That that was... Yeah. That we were done. Um, so, yeah, that is not uncommon. Um, but, yeah, that's that's Ursa Astra 2, Beautiful Dreamer. It's It's a very... It's a very unusual film, really, all things considered. For as wacky a slapstick comedy as I was led to believe that that Urusai Yatsura is, um, it was a, a surprisingly not nearly as goofy slapsticky as I expected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I really enjoyed it um, just because it was just um, first of all I I love her work so mm-hmm. that's so and it was an and it was a really new thing to me mm-hmm. so it, that was kind of fun. I had originally tried watching i which is i kind of run with whatever i can get my hands on so if it comes out to be a sub or a dub i just kind of go with it and i usually go with english dubs because that's usually what i get so i was actually watching the the the, um sub for a change so Mm -hmm. i was watching this on retro crush i was watching and listening to the japanese um you know language and doing the subtitles Mm -hmm. and i was really enjoying it the retro crush does this kind of weird ad thing and then it was just like going 10 minutes of the show 10 minutes of that and it was just bothering me so i went on to tubi because i remember you saying it was on tubi and um and i went on there and it was just like here you go here's the English stuff and i was like okay that's that's fine i'm watching it and it's the you know english voice cast on it and as i'm still enjoy the movie by the way Mm. but i was just like you know for the first time i was just like for in a very long time where i was just like you know, I kind of prefer the Japanese. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I prefer the subtitle version, and the reason why I felt that way was because I felt like all the the, the Japanese voice cast was much more connected mm-hmm. in their in their in their voice acting, and that they were really kind of more playing off of each other as opposed to here's my lines, here's the mic, mm-hmm. you know, here's the right. thing, do, you, do your do your job. And like particularly with Ataru, I felt the guy who did it, who did Ataru's voice, Japanese, mm. was really. I mean, that that was Ataru to me. Uh, okay, and then yeah. when we got okay. to, when we got to to the English version, okay, he, he's playing a you know a lecherous, goofy guy, and that's cool. But it just didn't have the same, you know, gravitas, I guess, mm-hmm. as as the Japanese stuff. And um, another reason why I, I liked really liked this movie was that um, uh, all the Recycled character designs of all the different series in, in this movie. Mm-hmm. So if you're a fan of her stuff, you're gonna be like, Sakura's what's your name from Mason Koku? He's he's <laughs> Uno from Ryan Live One Half. She's this and he's mm-hmm. that, and, you know. And you just kind of go through it. And it's just kind of fun to, to identify those characters. And um, but I think the big selling point for me mm-hmm. for this movie, particular movie, was the animation. The fact that it was Oshi. Mm-hmm. That directed this and made it fun and with glimpse of seriousness and just you know just it was just a good it was just a good movie I, I thought it was a good movie there you go. and um and it was it aged well mm-hmm. that's the other part of it yeah it, it definitely aged well you know you can definitely see some of these anime made in the 70s and the 80s and you're just kind of like Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's your version of cell phone in 1979. Okay, Kimigori that's... Orange Road, mm. <laughs> <laughs> really dated. Yeah, was... This, yeah, this this yeah. stood the test of time because I think yeah. that the way that the characters are done, mm-hmm. um, it's not trying to either you know be anywhere even remotely near realistic, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the caricatures of them, you know, that makes it stand the test of time i think so it's it was yeah, yeah. cool yeah, i agree i hate i hated lum saying darling whoever the english voice actress was for that mm. oh boy so every okay. time she said darling it just grated on me i'm like oh yeah. stop saying that yeah. just stop saying it. um yeah and, and i i watched the english dub on uh prime and um i know there were two dubs of this so i'm not sure which dub it was it's not a great dub um, it is, you know, they're, they're, it's not a terrible dub, I would say, but it's it's very much, and I, I totally agree with you, Steve, but it's just, you know, it's folks doing their lines, doing their best, but it just kind of doesn't come together as a really good dub. Also, they, like, don't pronounce the Japanese names 
correctly. So it's like, you know, Mandao yeah. and Sakura, I think, uh, was, was oh. her name. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, and like multiple characters are doing it, so clearly like there was some miscommunication about it um, or lack of communication, whatever. So um, like for me, it was, and the reason I watched the English dub is because I was, I was, I had seen it before, so I knew it was happening, so I wanted to pay attention to the visuals. Um, so I didn't care really uh, the audio, but uh, yeah, I, I would I, I would definitely say if you have a chance, I think the the Japanese dub would probably be the, the way to go if you can. Yeah, um, yeah. Such is life. And again, it's one of the problems with these older properties where it's like, okay, well, we're probably gonna dub it. Who cares? Like of, of the folks who are watching this, like the the, the classic fans. They they're gonna watch the Japanese dub anyway, so you know, uh, you know, you're probably not getting a lot of getting a lot of Wendy Lee's on this one, unfortunately. Such is life. Um, but yeah, that is Ursayatsura Two, Beautiful Dreamer. Next week we'll be talking about Megazone Two Three, the classic Mecha OVA that is a trip. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, a lot yes, happens in that OVA. <laughs> Um, a lot of people making some questionable decisions as well, but we'll get to that. Um, so that is, uh, that is what we'll talk about next time. Uh, meanwhile, let us go ahead and uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back in a little bit uh, to talk about various fun things, news and such. Um, we'll just chat a little bit, bit about uh, um, some topics particularly related to the anime industry itself. So we will see you all in a little bit.